absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest nation in the world. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in, in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household income, number four in labor force, and number four in exports. We lead, we lead the world only in three categories. Number of incarcerated people per capita, number of adults who believe angels are real, and defense spending. We spend more money than the next 26 countries combined, 25 of whom are allies. It's when you ask what makes us the greatest country in the world, I don't know what the f you're talking about. This video was inspired by some of the comments in the expats groups and some of the comments on my channel and questions that I got. And it got me thinking about different issues that we face or that we faced in America and the sad part is that they're still present there and we have different reasons for why we move to a certain place, why we move from one country to another or in general the choices that we make. But there's some undeniable truths that probably play a part in why we make certain decisions. Although the US is one of the richest societies in history, it still falls behind other developed nations in some crucial indicators of human development, like education, healthcare, homelessness, infrastructure, culture, and social intelligence. The US is a mixed bag of people, ideologies, and literally every person wants a different thing from their neighbor. But we're all human beings, and there's some basic things that are vital to all of us, regardless of our background. In today's video, I want to discuss why I think Spain is richer than America. In America, every person is for himself. The whole nation is based on survival. And that's not because of poverty, but ideology. It is me generation. No one really emotionally cares about the other person. Everybody is focused on material gains rather than the humane aspect of society. Which leads me to my next topic, which is a very painful and sad topic, homelessness. There are billion dollar companies in the Bay Area and chronic homelessness. How can even these two be put in the same sentence? How is this normal? There are bacteria in some states in the water that are found only in the poorest regions of Africa. How is this a first world country? So this is a bank in the center. And I want to keep their privacy, but this is how they let homeless sleep in the bank in Spain. And here I am under a bridge in Turia Park, which is a vast, huge park with many bridges, and there's zero homeless people here. If this is in LA, it will be filled with tents. In Valencia, which is the third largest city in Spain, I have barely seen any homeless people. The two homeless people that I saw were both reading books. One of them, he was sitting in front of uh, Consum, and I saw a guy walk by and he gave him his dog and he gave him some change while he shops. But there is no schizophrenia, no sick people on the streets. In LA, for example, I was pushed by a shopping cart by a homeless lady in the middle of the street in downtown where I work. I was terrified, I was scared and I was sad at the same time because these people are not just only homeless, they're sick. They need to be in a mental institution, they need to be taken care of. And how can you measure the wealth of a country if you see how these people are being taken care of? How else can you measure the wealth? With numbers, with money, in Austin, there is a tech company that recently started a project dealing with homelessness, which is also a huge problem in Texas, in Austin specifically. And they are creating something that is based on the blockchain. They will create digital identities for all these homeless people because it's very hard to keep track of their documents, their identity, most of them have no birth certificates, no ID, no social security, and these people struggle to get the care that they can from the government even. So through these um, digital, digital identities, they can start giving them 
health care and, and shelter and other things that would help them and make their life a little bit better. As many of you probably know, in most European countries, the education is free and everyone has access to it, which creates a better labor force, more entrepreneurs, skillful members of society, and so on. And we all want to give a better education to our children. One of the reasons I think Spain is richer than America, it's also based on education. In America, the average tuition is $5,000 to $50,000 per year. In Spain, this number goes from $880 to $2,500 a year. Another huge difference is that in Spain, there are no school districts. You can enroll your child in religious school, in a regular public school, in a private school, but you're not limited to the region that you live in. I think this makes it very hard for, for Americans because it's determining where you can live, where you can afford to live, to pick a better school for your child. And I even have an example with a friend of mine who lived in Chicago and she had to change, she had to leave her apartment and go to a completely new house just because her daughter was studying in a different school. She can't keep going to the same school if she lives in a different location. And that's pretty sad because you want to find the best education for your child and at the same time keep it safe because as we know, there are mass shootings in American schools, which leaves the parents in America terrified. And they're known here. That's not even a concept in, in Spain. I've never heard any news about mass shootings in a shopping mall or in school or in, in the park or anywhere. Speaking of education, things don't stop only with academia. How we teach our children on values, lifestyle, health habits will shape their life. What we eat and how we exercise will determine our well-being. And Spain leads America in their food culture as well. One, that the Mediterranean diet is one of the best in the world, but also in the European Union, and since Spain is part of the European Union, there are a lot of ingredients that are banned in Spain and in Europe, which are still present in American products. A study last year have found that in American counties, especially the ones in the deep south, the life expectancy is lower than the one in Algeria, Bangladesh and Nicaragua. America, it's the only one, the only developed country that does not offer health care to its citizens. On the contrary, Spain has free health care for all its residents with an option to private care, which costs about $90 a month, and they will accept you with pre-existing conditions. Why? Because that's your human right and not a privilege. And in America, we have people that go bankrupt because of bills they couldn't pay. In a report from UNICEF, America was listed as the only country that does not offer paid maternity leave. In Spain, the maternity leave is 16 weeks with an option to extend it for 13 more weeks. 15 years ago, the new dads were allowed only two days off work paid two days off work to see their newborn. In 2007, based on the Spanish law of gender equality, this was extended to two weeks, which was pretty revolutionary even for the rest of the European countries. January 1st, 2021, Spain gives the new dads 16 weeks paternal leave, which is equal to the maternity leave. Most Spanish are in a better shape than most Americans, and there are a few reasons for that. One is that the regional governments in Spain created facilities, free public facilities, sports facilities in pretty much every neighborhood and village. And also the urban layout, it's in a way where it promotes walking and biking. Whereas in American cities, in most American cities, people get on their car and they go grocery shopping or they go to the coffee place and partially it's habit based but on another hand the urban layouts are not made for for walking and biking and 
this really reflects on the health on the American people. The wealth of a country, it's not being determined only by the material gains of that country. It is based also on how the government takes care of the people living there, what's provided to us, how is it the access to healthcare and education and culture. Culture is another really important factor that enriches our soul. It adds to the value of the country, of the people living in that country. I watched an interview, it was actually a lecture with uh, Jordan Peterson uh, just this morning, and it was about how staggering beautiful Europe is. And what was so interesting there was the concept of, of beauty and how much society is willing to give in, to invest physically, financially, emotionally into art and culture. And he gave example with uh, Sagrada Familia, which is in uh, Barcelona. It's still not uh, being completed. It's been built for like 300 years or so. And in America, things are measured in quarterly reports. Everything is fast, everything is instant and immediate, and there is no patience to invest in beauty and in culture. And I think this is also affecting, it's affecting our souls, it's affecting us emotionally. There is a lot of street art here in Spain. There are a lot of free events and festivals and constantly something going on on the street. And again, this accessibility that I'm talking about, people can witness and they can be part of something, of, of a cultural event at any time, at any season, at any given moment. And in America, unfortunately, for most things, most things that I visited, and I love going to galleries and museums, everything is paid and it's not cheap, which again, it, it prevents some people from going and seeing and connecting with art. The U.S. focuses on work, consumerism, and corporate profits. And while some people are being pushed to the bottom, others simply forgot how to live. Spain focuses on happiness, health, and well-being. And their simplified version of success is what I think makes Spain richer than America. And soon also we'll stop comparing the wealth of one country or another. The wealth will be measured by our human values, by our ability to care for one another. I hope I inspired some, some thoughts, some additional moments of wonder. And give it a like and I will see you in my next one. Ciao. А, так само така го дуе. Девет. Although the US, it's one...